Right, you're on. You're on. Yeah. Big barrel. Oh, hey! First barrel, buddy. Doing well. Perfect amount of drag there. Jaden's first bar. Fucking redfish first bar. How is that? That's it. Go home now. Yeah. Oh, it comes in, you're going to have to drop your rod lower. Then you're dropping your rod tip down, down, down towards the water. Then down lower, down lower. It's almost there a is. There he is. Yeah, no, yeah. That's it. Little Mick, catch a little fish. <laughs> ready to go? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ready to go, Skinner? Vroom, vroom. Definitely vroom. Yeah, ready. Stand hey, Jay, ready. Are you excited? Ready. <laughs> We're off to Broome to go see some fishes. This is it. Little Barbie area. Little El Fresco. Nice. Nice. This is the uh, kids' bedroom. Sorry, young adults. And uh, like, I mean, she's pulling off, which is a bit hot. <laughs> anyway, that's the kitchen area. We're gonna eat maybe, who knows, she cares, more like drinking more than anything. And then you got like this little day pool, whatever you want to call it. A little fresco area with the pool. There it is. Nice. So yeah, no, it's a nice little villa. It is uh, quite warm, it's about a thunderstorm at the moment, but that's the bedroom area there. And this is our bathroom. There we go. Boring as shit, but I thought I'd just, you know. We've arrived and it was just like this behind us. And then, um, yeah, <laughs> it's just going mental, which is uh, awesome. Yeah, everyone's going to call the palm trees and everything like over there. There it comes. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> oh, shit. Come and see where we're going. <laughs> crazy man, crazy. All I'm grateful for is we didn't land in this shit. Coming on the top. 
life chase the bait, but be up in less than a metre of water. You know, 600 mil of water sometimes you get your big sparrow in the bait, which is quite unbelievable. But uh, we'll be using vibes because they don't foul on the muddy bottom. So we'll be able to troll those through the real shallow water. We'll see if we get some activity up around this creek as the tide pushes into the bay. So, fingers crossed. So Adam's uh, a local here, and I'll tell you his fishing company very shortly. <laughs> so he's going to get the dogs for us today. So, um, over there, that's where we're going to go. We're just going to wait and see. So it's hunting time. So we had a lot of stingers coming up yesterday on the lines. Nobody on, still clanger. So with these, what we do is we keep the rocks up high, gentle lift, just drop them on their own way. Gentle lift, drop them on their own way. So you basically should be feeling that vibration every time the lift, and it's dead gentle lift, dead gentle drop. If people work them too fast, and then you're basically just pulling it straight away from that. You feel that vibration to hit them in shallow water. You're on. You're on. You're on. Yeah. Big barrel. Hey! First barrel, buddy. Absolute horse to me. Hey, big horse. 90 plus, I'd say. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you're doing well. Perfect amount of drag there. Jaden's first barrel. Bloody greenfish, first barrel. Hey. How's that? That's it. You go home now. Time. As it comes in, you're going to have to drop your rod lower. Yeah. Keep dropping your rod tip down, down, down towards the water. Keep down lower, down lower. It's almost Here like is. a liter. Here he is. You ain't over yet. Nearly at him. How big is that, Adam? How big is that? Oh, look at the size of that dog. Woo! Get in there. Oh no. Green ass. We'll get him. Gotta take your time. Get that pressure on, buddy. Yep. Take your time on him. Slow up, slow up. Lift this head one more time. Here we go. Here she comes. Okay! <laughs> this is the first battle, boy. Plus battle, mate. Five minutes, yeah, mate. Gonna have to be a big dinosaur. <laughs> so I'll get him to come over. Yep. What we'll have to do with this big female. So this is a female? Now, how do you tell it's a female? Well, any barrel with salt water, I'll be over about 75. Look at the size of that barrel. Right. female. Yep. So this one's well oversized, maximum 80 in West Australia. Yep. So this one is well, well on its way to being a big breeder, you know? So Beautiful. So that's definitely going to go back. 90 plus big dog. <laughs> get that lure out of the way. So what we'll do, keep her in the net. And okay. give you a little bit of a hint with these big barrel. If you do end up catching a big barrel, guys, keep them in the net. Make sure they're good to swim. Then when you're ready for your photos, get all your cameras ready, lift them on board, and then that way they've got a real good chance of going. Last thing you want to do, chuck them on a hot deck, and then they're all fried by the time you take a photo. So we'll keep her in there. Uh, I'll teach you how to hold them. They've got a lot of sharp spark spikes on them. They can do you a lot of damage. So we'll keep her in there for now. If you want to get some still shots ready, I'll get my phone out so I can get a photo as well. So that one there. Got for the, got the old Facebook page. Right, and get, a, get a lift it up. When she comes, we'll get the drag mat out as well. Woo Look at the size, that's your first barrel, bud. That's good. Eh? Good. Yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Amazing. What was that? Not even five minutes. That's what I call fishing. So, so this is Adam. He's from WA Barra Fishing Charters. Yes? Yep. I'm going to tell you, we're in Broome and uh, first time here. And to tell you what, if that's any indication, on what the rest of the day is going to be like. That's how you get the dogs. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, eh? Huh? All right. What size? What size? Over 90. Over 90? She's a 95, mate. <laughs> Woo solid that's your first yeah, barrel, 95. Yeah. How do you feel, yeah. bud? That's good. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's good. Now, when you lift them, mate, <laughs> yeah. so these are the anal spots. They do yeah. people the most damage. Yep. When you support a big barrel like this, you've always got to hold them by the gut. Yep. A lot of people pick them up from photos from the head yeah. and you'll kill them because yeah. they're, they're, they're back to stretch. They'll swim off oh, and they might die later. Yeah. So hold them by the gut, so my bottom mouth. Hard as we can clamp down. Put our hand here in the middle of the belly to support them. We lift them out slightly, not to make them look bigger, but so if they kick, we can roll them down. Yeah. Give them a little shake, normally they put their top spike up, it makes a better photo, so give them a little shake. There we go. That's a beast. It doesn't get much better than that. First trial, boom! <laughs> 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 Yeah. Everything that could have went right did go right. So we got the thing on the boat, the barra. We got hook up. You know, it was just absolute textbook. Textbook, textbook. Thank you, Adam. We're in 400 mil of water, bro. 400 mil. That's only as big as uh, my lunchbox. <laughs> what is it? What did I get? Oh, bait, mullet. Little, little bloody, uh, blue Nose 7. Oh, Blue Nose 7, okay. 
the best that I can do, buddy. The best that I can do. Here we go with this. That's it. Little mink, catch a little fish. <laughs> they won't. This is a Scott side scanner hummingbird. Yeah, mega scan. Mega scan. And what it does, it scans either side of the boat to about seven meters, I think uh, Adam said. So thereabouts. It's only 1.7 meters of water. I'm hoping that we will see some barra or threadfin or crocodile. Nah, I don't want to fuck off. Yeah, you'll see a croc on there. There's a croc there, you'll see the whole shack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we're on the tide at the top at the moment, um, Adam was saying, and then what's going to happen is that all this area here, as you see behind the mangroves, all over here, what will happen is that the tide will turn and come back out, and apparently what happens is that it, it's like mud flats. So we've come into this area here now, and uh, it's uh, pretty shallow. It's, it's only about 600, 700, and, uh, but Adam tells us that there's some good barrier, so, so he's, we've done our part, now the barriers need to do theirs. Jaden's alright, he's really got his uh, little trophy for today. Go Tony. Big shark! What is it, a hammerhead? Big hammerhead chasing the thready in about two foot of water. Shows him in 60 centimetres of water and there's about a three metre hammerhead. <laughs> I don't think that's ready made it, I've got a feeling. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I think nature just takes its courses then. That, especially if you're up over Fitzroy or someplace like that. These things cost 20 bucks. It's a lead weight. You drop them down, they'll save you 20 bucks every single time. <laughs> if you get your lure back. Okay, well, we'll see. Probably save me 500 plus bucks a year. The idea is you pull your line up tight like this. Put it on the main line. Back shut, run your, your main line around the loop, and it slides down. So, what, how does it work, mate? So, this here will, if it's under a log, it'll come down, it'll hit the bib of the lure, knock the lure down, yeah. bring it out, a hook down, jam onto the treble, and you're pulling out on the treble rather than snapping your leader. So, we're basically reversing it? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Oh, cool, really yeah. good on bib lures in deep water. Learn something every day. Oh, this one, hang on, there's some little crib, like little orange crabs here. <laughs> what are they, sorry? Mangrove crabs, yeah. Mangrove crabs? Yeah, basically meant to look like a dead mangrove leaf. Alright. Yellow and orange leaf on the tree. Yeah. What have you got there, Adam? A little blue nose salmon, mate. Blue nose. Not bad chewing if they're fresh. Not a monster, but. Send him on his way, this one, I reckon. Uh, they're very similar to uh, thread fin, you said, yeah? Yeah, they actually are a thread fin. They're uh, what they call a lesser thread fin or a blue nose. Right, so. This is uh, how you tie up the, the lure. A little loop knot. My mallet is a perfection loop. I just use a bow line around the corner, back through on the self. Done. The bow line, the bow line never fail. What are those things called, mate? Sorry? Uh, mud skippers, yeah. Mud skippers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what Jaden's doing is there's plenty of jellyfish in the water, and these are actual stingers. We're taking the stingers off because it's not fishing dry. Right. You've got to be very careful that he doesn't get on the back of the hand, tear it off, otherwise, the lure doesn't swim. Hang on, hang on, hang on, wait a second. I finally got a freddy. There we go. That's absolutely cracker, so. I'll bring her in. Leave her in the water and then I'll bring her up to the boat when we get her on the side. Nice, so that's considered we'll a good size? Around. That's a real good size, mate. That's, like that's a good. 900 or something. Pre, mate. Okay. We've got the two best fish in the creek. Going good. <laughs> Going good, mate. <laughs> much better than that. Oh, very good. In the dying minutes, too. <laughs> Right, jump on in. <laughs> so after a pretty successful day, first time here fishing, 
in a while. And uh, what uh, Adam's going to do is going to show us how you fill it. A thread fin salmon that we just caught. Oh, no, no jokes. These are probably one of the hardest fish to fill it. They've got nodule bones down the back of the spine. Uh, very low yielding fish as far as your return to the size of the fish. So Barramundi, you're going to massive return. They're going to be about 30 to 40 centimetres here you've got to actually flick around the ends of the bones with your knife. I'll just show you from here. So probably pop over this side, mate. So we start heading along the backbone like all fish, obviously. We'll get a bit, a bit of a clunk around about here, which is an unusual shaped bone. We move up around the top of that bone. We feel our way around and back down. It's that bone in there, rock solid. It stops you from getting a real nice fillet. Then we run down the next one. There should be another bone about here somewhere. Clunk, there she is. Have a bit of a move around, build around with the top of the knife. Get down the back of that one. And obviously we can just flick our way through. All on the backbone, trying to get as much flesh out as possible. This one's here, if you come through the top and there's a bit of a flicking up along the rib bone, the rib cage I should say. Get to about so, then down through the gut. Now once again, these got these nodulary bones. Sometimes there's another bone down lower on the anal fin here. This one doesn't seem to have a really big one. And then we've got a saw up and down along the backbone, up and down, which is very unusual. For most fish you just get a real good run here. It's a pity because you leave a lot of meat behind, but that's about as good as you can get it. You can see those nodule bones there, 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 there. Very hard to get a nice clean run. So even though it looks like it's been hacked into, that's about as good as a result as you'll ever get off one of these. It's the usual. That's pretty much doing, I suppose. But yeah, see so yeah, you got to you got to sort up and down on these. And normally, would you um, like uh, like back home? What we do is we like you catch a fish, you cut it, you, so bleed it out. Would that all help with the flesh? Oh, or? You can you can bleed them. Um, these beautiful white flesh, they're almost translucent. Probably one of the best eating fish, or the best eating fish yeah. in the bay. Doesn't so is that uh, your normal practice, or you just don't? Yeah, uh, sometimes I'll, you can bleed them. It does make a lot of mess if you're on charter and you've got yeah, stuff yeah. floating around in the air. But like if you were just fishing, so. right? If you were just fishing. Would you, would you do it? Is it an yeah, advantage, I'll disadvantage? Yeah, I normally pack them straight on the ice. You'll yep. find most commercial guys, they don't they don't actually neck fish. Most commercial guys will put them straight in the salt yep. with a brine and go hold the market. Yep. So yeah, now the thread fin well. salmon, what is it like? Um, very similar in taste to, to a barramundi. Yeah. They're not actually a salmon at all. Uh, so they've got really nothing to do with it. Salmon species, obviously like a pink fleshed salmon or salmon swimming up a stream. Um, their closest relation is to the uh, barramundi. It's one of their closest relations. Okay. All right, guys. When we get home, what we'll do is we'll show you how we're going to cook it, and uh, I'll get Jaden to uh, tell me what he thinks of it. That's all right. Jaden's always hungry. So. <laughs> Now we've um, we just caught in the net with this here a box jellyfish. Now we want to be touching that. Adam's just been putting his hands in there. <laughs> there it is here. I don't know if you can see that in there. Yeah, so that little to there, he can kill you. That's about right, isn't it? You yeah, it's about right. They can stop your heart if you've got a weak heart. So that is a box jellyfish. And that there can kill you. That doesn't look like anything at all. <laughs> 